to say something that may be surprising to you. Um, I don't automatically agree with people when they say that they're homosexual. Because there is no evidence that there is such a thing. There's evidence that there are people who engage in the practice of what the Bible calls sodomy. But there is no evidence that there are people who have a permanent orientation toward homosexuality. In fact, there's 2,000-year-old evidence, and you'll hear about it tomorrow, that there are people who practice homosexuality, who call themselves homosexuals, who, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, were not that anymore. Which means that being homosexual is not the same thing as being black or being white or being whatever. It's not the same thing. It's not an immutable characteristic, and nobody has proven otherwise. There is zero, zero biological evidence that there is an immutable characteristic. If there was biological evidence, then you could prove that somebody was homosexual after they died. All you have to do is do an autopsy. You just do a postmortem, go into the brain, and find that area in the brain that, that, that homosexuals have. Wait, wait, what? Nothing in the brain? Okay, well, go into the genes and find that gene. To, oh, wait, nothing, nothing in the genes? Well, uh, I heard about a pheromone study. You go into the pheromone. Oh, really? That was not, huh? There's absolutely nothing, nothing that proves that there is such a thing as a person who is a homosexual. There are people who practice homosexuality, but there is nothing in the world, nothing that demonstrates that there is a class or category of people who are immutably and unchangeably homosexuals, just like I'm immutably and unchangeably a black person. It doesn't exist although the majority of you out there believe that it does because you've been told over and over and over and over again. You hear so many stories. I've known all my life. I knew it when I was a little boy. I knew it when I was a little girl. No, you didn't. You weren't even, you didn't even have sexual thoughts of those kind when you were a little boy or a little girl. You didn't even develop sexually back then. How could you possibly have known about your sexual orientation? That's a ridiculous lie. And we let people get away with it all the time. All the time. We shouldn't. We shouldn't. The other problem with this line of argumentation, of course, is that Paul in Romans chapter 1 also addresses women who engage in unnatural practices with other women. So if all Paul was dealing with was the practice of pederasty, in the pagan Greco-Roman world where men use boys for sex, then please somebody tell me why he also addressed women who engaged in that practice with other women when that wasn't the same as pederasty in the Greco-Roman world. Hmm? See, Matthew Vines is just hoping that we just sort of look over that, you know? He brings up some, some ancient, you know, Greek literature. and You know, they use this and they use that. And we're supposed to go, wow, I didn't know that. Maybe that was what Paul was. No, afraid not. Afraid not. It's not the only literature in existence. Paul wouldn't have been ignorant of what Matthew Vines is talking about. And that doesn't address the issue of the women. Here's the other problem. If we make the argument that this practice is acceptable because of an orientation, then what do we do with the pedophile who says, this is my orientation. I've known it forever. I, as an adult man, am oriented toward young boys or oriented toward young girls. It's just my orientation. And since it's my orientation and we're accepting orientations, then you have to accept that one. Or what if I'm just oriented toward violence, violence toward women? I beat my wife, you get upset with me, and I say, whoa, 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 this is my orientation. I've known since I was a little boy that I was oriented toward violence and particularly against females. So how can you judge me for this violence against my wife when obviously it's my orientation? Hmm? Promiscuity. Run around with all different kinds of women. Hey, 
It's my orientation. I've known it for a long time. So now all of a sudden, if we accept Matthew Vine's argument, there are a whole lot of other things where we have to say, okay, it's a sin unless, of course, you feel deeply. Because remember, there's no biological evidence whatsoever, right? It's a sin unless you feel deeply that you're oriented in this way. And of course, if you feel deeply that you're oriented in this way, then all bets are off. You don't have to pay attention to what the Bible says in regards to sexual sin. Do you see how complicated this becomes? By the way, even if we do ever have biological evidence that doesn't change things, why? Well, if we find a gay gene and we say, well, well here, okay, now this person has, a, it's, it's genetically we know that this person is predisposed to homosexuality. Okay, so it's not a sin anymore. Ooh, ooh, so if I'm genetically predisposed to alcoholism, by the way, there's more evidence for that. I'm genetically predisposed to alcoholism. I get a pass, y'all, because I have a genetic predisposition. Therefore, it's not sin. I'm genetically predisposed to be violent, particularly against women. I get a pass. Do, do you follow? Okay. So this is the problem with...